Right, of course, it's not exactly the same thing. All right, get this cell phone out of here. Jesus Christ. Um, sorry, it's been blowing up. I'm just trying to have a moment of peace. What's up, all you cool kids of the internet? Mark here. And today, we're checking out Nibla of Scaris Grawl. Um, Nibla of Scaris is a great band. Um, I have not listened to them in quite some time, uh, but I really like them. I think they're very, very, very good. Um, and I'm excited to talk about it. So we're going to try to get uh, kind of straight into it here after the announcements. Um, so first and foremost, my name is Mark. I'm a metal vocalist myself. I'm in a band called Kardashev. Uh, we're on Metal Blade Records. We released an album back in June. I'll probably start say, stop saying that once we get to June of this year. Um, I'm a full-time uh, metal vocal coach, teaching people how to make all sorts of noises, you know, like <laughs> safely and efficiently for uh, years to come. Um, I work with beginners, advanced, intermediate vocalists of all uh, of, of all types, and uh, I make these videos where I take the reaction format, break it down, have fun, make it educational. I do pause a lot to talk about the vocal technique. So if you're not a fan of the reaction videos with the pausing, um, I don't know what to tell you. You'll figure it out. Um, and that being said, uh, if you like the content, like, share, and subscribe it means a lot. Check us out on Patreon if you want to be a part of our Discord community. We have listening parties every Friday. We've got events, like multiple events throughout the week. It's a lot of fun. Um, I make as many of them as I can, being a new dad and being a teacher and being in a band. It's not all of them, but it's, it, you know, I do what I can. But anyways, uh, if you haven't heard any of Scarce before, uh, I think you're going to enjoy it. I think it's going to be a treat. Uh, they're a very good band, very dynamic, um, folky, fantasy, prog, death metal, just a lot of good stuff. Uh, sometimes fusion can cause confusion, but I think that these uh, I think that these fine folks do it very, very well. They fuse a lot of genres uh, very ele elegantly. So let's go ahead and see how they do here with Neoblivascaris Grawl. Here we go. Sounds like a good place to pause. Okay, so already a lot of cool stuff going on. Um, so first and foremost, I love... This is a really good showcase of the power of mids, right? This, this is a really good showcase of the power of mids. You know, in my reaction videos like a year ago, um, I used to talk about how I think people are kind of sleeping on mids. I think people don't like, you know, um, give the mids the love that I feel like they deserve. Um, but I feel like in the past year, that's changed. I'm hearing a lot more mids. I'm hearing a lot more strong mids. Uh, when I think of strong mids, uh, the first person who usually comes to my mind is uh, Joe Bad from Fit for an Autopsy. Um, his mids are just beastly um, and very, very good. And I think that they're, uh, the, the mids here are phenomenal, ph ph phenomenal as well. So let's talk about mids, right? Let's talk about mids. How do we, how do we define a mid tone and how do we find a mid tone? Well, one thing to remember is that a mid is going to be kind of relative to your voice. It's the middle of your range, right? It's the middle of the, the vocals that you do. Usually, not always, but usually a person's mids are going to be closer to their low screams than they are to their high screams. Again, not always. I'm not trying to create a binary here, but this is often the case, especially in the false chord world. Although in the fry world, it can kind of flip. People's mids can be closer to their high screams than to their low screams. I was just about to go off on another technicality, but I, like, let's leave it there for now. Um, anyways, 
One of the best ways that you can find your mid is to find an incredibly relaxed vocal tract, right? Drop your jaw and make a strong vocal. Like this is assuming that you can just make some basic, basic distortion, make a strong vocal that requires only the amount of air that you need to, to achieve the sound. Right? So I know, man, I got something stuck in my eye. What the hell? It's probably from this glove. It's probably something dusty. I know it looks, I know I look like super cool, but it's just cause I have really dry skin. So I got a lot of lotion on this hand. That's all that's going on. Um, anyways, so I know that sounds like a lot of steps, right? But let's say that you can make just like a basic, right? You can do that. Right. I'm going to drop my jaw. I'm going to take a healthy breath in. Right. So for me, that's where my, my mid tends to sit. Now, the amount of work it that that takes is relatively low, right? And that's a good thing to focus on for a lot of our vocals. We want to not uh, ex express a bunch of effort that we don't need to, right? Then with that mid, that really uh, phenomenal mid that we're hearing here, right? He's doing a little bit different than me, but it doesn't matter. Um, we can tilt down to a low with the shape of our mouth, but still have the comfort of a mid, right? So, right? It's all a mid, just uh, mess around with resonance. I want to talk about the singer as well, but this is a nine minute song uh, <laughs> and I got stuff to do. So uh, I got to do a bunch of student emails after this uh, and then I have a lesson. So I'm going to keep going and then we'll, we'll talk about our, our friend, the singer here pretty soon. But so far, so far, pretty good song. Oh, I want to I want to pause there because a there's a really cool vocal thing to talk about and b like that bass run, forget it. I'm not a bassist, right? So I can't really like talk about his technique or anything like that. But I really appreciate uh like a good playful, a good playful bass, a bass that's like really really willing to take this take the forefront sometimes. And <laughs> that little run, oh, that was choice. Okay, so um one thing I really like about Neoblivascaris and their music is that their music kind of wanders around. Now, sometimes we talk about music like meandering, like it doesn't know what to do. However, I feel like Nebula of Scarce, their music, it kind of makes me feel like I'm wandering around like this, like, like this fanciful landscape. Like, I don't know where I'm going and I don't know what I'm going to see around the corner. But whenever I see it, I'm like, damn, that's sick. Damn, that's cool. Holy crap, that's a big cliff. Wow, look, a dragon's nest, right? I don't know. What I'm trying to say is that their music is, it wanders in a way that is, that is, um, enticingly unpredictable right now obviously you know they have their sound they have their niche they know what they're doing um but yeah every time i listen to neebly viscaris if it's a song i'm hearing for the first time um it's something that i think is pretty cool so i'm gonna go back because i want to talk about the singer a little bit and i want to talk about the the tone and the timbre of his voice right so let's go back to maybe two minutes even Right there. That sound that he's making, right? Let's talk about his sound. Ossified. Ossified is what he sounds like he's singing. So this is a fun place to talk about timbre, right? Timbre is a cool subject because it, rely, it, it, it has to do with <clears throat> our, our harsh vocals, but our clean vocals as well, right? So like, what is timbre? 
Tampa's a cool subject. Uh, I like to think of it. There is a uh, YouTube channel. I don't think she is making videos anymore. Maybe. I don't know. The YouTube channel is called Sounds Good. I actually, uh, on uh, on like our main page, I have it linked as like one of my favorite channels. There's a section. Um, and she has this long video on Tamper, and it was like extremely in-depth and it blew my mind. And at the end, she sums it up basically as like, it's how we can make the same pitch sound different is a simple way to think about it. And I really like that because that is such a powerful tool for our singing voices right so i can have uh i can have like i don't know this note e right there ah ha right you can do that same thing with screams too right of course it's not exactly the same thing all right get this cell phone out of here jesus christ um sorry it's been blowing up and i'm just trying to have a moment of peace um, anyway, so, um, <laughs> we can do a lot of things to change around and to, uh, and to move our voice that are a lot of fun. So like, let's talk about this one right now. I'm going to be clear here. I can tell you how he's doing it. This is not how I sing or how I have ever worked to sing. So in these examples I'm going to give, I am of course not going to sound as good as he does with a style that he has worked on from a very, for a very long time, but he's building on a very bright kind of nasal twangy voice right ah la la ah right there la and he has found this perfect sweet spot to where he does not sound overly nasal but he sounds bright and can cut through the mix really really nicely and so he has on this ossified he's got this really wide twangy sound so we've got this like slight tilt in the larynx those arytenoids are slightly tilting in right we've got the tongue Ah, uh, yeah, we've got the tongue kind of up in the back here, and it gives us that sort of narrowed yet free voice that really works for the song and really works for the, this as well. A lot of people, when they're trying to uh, add some twang to their voice, um, what they'll do is they'll squeeze their vocal folds. Ossified, right? But I wouldn't want to do that for very long. And you could hear that, oh, ossified. You could hear that, like, even though it sounds kind of cool, it sounds strained. It sounds tight. And I can guarantee you that if I sang that way with my vocal cords like this, kind of like an anime character, I challenge you to a duel, sensei, right? Um, now, of course, anime voice actors probably can make that sound without strain. That ain't me. Um, you know, <clears throat> um, or make those, those voices without squeezing the vocal cords. It's not going to last. It's not sustainable. So instead, we can kind of, <laughs> I like to do kind of like a, like either like a, like a very bad, like New York. Now, listen, if you're in New York, yes, I understand that not everybody in New York talks this way, right? But if I'm like, hey, I'm walking here, huh? Hey, I'm walking here, huh? I am ossified. That's most like the, the vocal folds themselves. Ah, yeah. Hey, the vocal folds, they're not squeezed together. What's happening is my tongue is raised and I'm sort of ah, ah tilting, tilting the larynx, the back of the larynx forward a little bit. Now, I'm not actively thinking about that, right? I, I would love to be able to like, uh, control my arytenoids like two little uh, like mandibles on like a tarantula i don't have that ability i don't think anybody does but when we're getting that sound in a relaxed way that's what's happening right so you can you can also do some, sort of a spongebob spongebob uh, spongebob like da, da, right that's how you that I, I saw behind the scenes and that's how the guy was making the laugh da, right da ha yeah Hey, one, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one. And you can play around with that voice. The trick is to just not feel, or the, the one of the goals is to just not feel like your vocal cords are squeezing together. I'm not a big fan of ever squeezing your vocal folds together too hard. But anyways, um, that is how, well, that's what he's doing. Um, not squeezing the vo vocal cords together. He's adding a healthy brightness to his voice. That sounds really, really good. He sounds great. Let's keep going.
Dude, just like throwing in casual harmonics. Shut up. All right, so I had to wait. I had to like that's the thing. Like you can't you can't interrupt that. Um now, of course, I am a vocalist. I am a uh, I'm a vocal I'm a vocal teacher, so I really try to keep my constructive feedback to vocals. Um so I couldn't tell you why I loved the composition from like a really academic standpoint, but goddamn, they are so good. Um, they are so good at long drawn out instrumental moments that le so this was interesting. That instrumental section felt much more led. I felt much more, much, much less like I was wandering and I was now like, I had now like gone through the forest, right? I'd gone through the forest, you know, <clears throat> the trees had gotten closer together. They gotten darker. The, the canopy was, was reaching over the top, obscuring more of the light. And I found this little candle lit hallway. And now, even though I'm a little bit more guided, I'm going through the hallway and the sense, the sensations are a little bit more streamlined. Like there's a heady smell in the air. There's, there's uh there are candles like every five feet or so just above my, my head level, making me, making me wonder if this hallway was built for, for humankind or some other type of beastly, uh, beastly creature. Um, I'm the forever DM in my group. You may be able to tell. Um, but he did something really cool. That's actually a good check, uh, for our vocals. I think it was at 430. Give me a quick second here. Okay. A little bit before. I'm also going to go back and pause it because that is a beautiful, that is a, oh, that is such a lovely uh, mouth shape for the vocal that he's doing. Now you'll notice most of the time I'm talking about the jaw down and back, down and back. Uh, uh, we can, we can push our, uh, our chin forward, you know, sometimes it's not like it's wrong. Um, it can cause a little strain around this joint to do so. Um, but this looks like that downward tilt of the mouth. Like I could, it's like. Like, that's right. He's got a beautiful mouth right here. I said it, folks. Um, but uh, the, the tone of his scream is great. So let's talk a little bit about, uh, let's talk a little bit about, uh, man, the things that, outside of vocal conversation, certain things just sound weird. Um, like, I spend a lot of time uh, staring at other dudes' tongues. It's just true. <laughs> you know, um, 
like an oh what a well, he's got such a beautiful shaped mouth here like just the tones uh um but what i'm talking about is less the tone and more that crescendo now you can do crescendos and stuff like that in post obviously you can just fade the volume in in, in many different ways but if you can take your vocal and like do a crescendo right now the ability to crescendo a vocal is going to be a little bit different depending on what type of vocal you're doing but if you can do your vocal at different very uh at, at varying uh places of volume and and uh weight right um then you've got some control right so we can take our vocal <laughs> right <laughs> right working on stuff like that requires like you can't really do that effectively unless the three ingredients that make up your voice are balanced which are uh breath support resonance and phonation or distortion right good the creation of speech sounds right so whatever vocal you have right um even if in your music you don't crescendo like let's say you're doing some like post hardcore like like kublai khan um, um, knocked loose type of stuff. You know, crescendo might not be that big of a thing. Although if you do crescendo, it would really stand out in the genre, I think. So maybe you want to try that. Um, but having the ability to, you know, build into like, oh, let's try it. Like, I don't know. Let's try it. Like doing something like that very comfortably and open, I think would be really, really cool. Um, and it's a really good way to sort of see where your vocal control is it's not the end all be all of whether or not you're a good vocalist or if you're doing vocals right um but it's a good test to see how much control you do have over your vocals and again i'm not an engineer so i, I couldn't tell you for certain but it sounds like you know he did actually crescendo that and then maybe in post they smoothed it out a little bit um but it was great it was cool and i feel like this is just a cool screenshot anyways uh, i'm gonna keep going All right, I'll pause it. I know it's probably a bad moment, but <clears throat> okay. One thing that he really did, uh, one thing that he did, which was really cool. And again, when I hear stuff like this, I don't have any way of knowing if the vocals were written to do this, but they have this effect. And I like to think that, th that it was intentional. Um, oh, something's flashing. Weird. Um, I love how over the span of what felt like 30 to 45 seconds, I don't know if that's accurate, um, <clears throat> his mid slowly started rising, 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 building up, and the music was changing. So he would rise a little bit, and then the music would change, and then he would rise a little bit, and then the music would change. So this is a really cool example of how I think that vocalists can lead um, songs, 
right? Or lead sections without being domineering, right? I feel like oftentimes when we listen to to metal and um, of any of any variety of any genre, um, oftentimes when we listen to metal and you can tell that the vocalists are trying to lead the song, they're kind of smashing the song to death with a baseball bat. You know what I mean? Um, it's it's just a lot of like you know nonstop, <laughs> like just not just never ending. Um, whereas here, it was it was very controlled very steady um and it really made the changes that happened to the song welcome in and rather than being jarring like continuing me you know faster and faster down the current of like the the white water rapids i was uh stuck on um the drum change underneath that like that happened right after he he got a little bit higher phenomenal guitar solo i'm sure was great i don't really like guitar solos most of the time i hear one i'm like eh but that's just a that's just a personal preference thing i'm not saying it was a bad guitar solo or ruined it it's not my place um but i love how he lifted his voice now here's the thing right i want to talk a little bit about screaming because there's so, there's there's something that is different yeah i don't know okay so I'm, i was working with a student recently um one of my most long-term students um he's got a phenomenal singing voice he and i have worked mostly with his screams um we've worked with his singing voice a little bit and he was um he was he was working on a cover and he was like you know oh i'm just i'm just kind of irritated because he's hitting this you know i don't remember what the note is i think it was a b4 he's hitting this b4 in like a really like chesty sound um like a really chesty mix and i'm hitting it in a really he heady mix and i just i'm messing it up and i was like why are you messing it up and he's like well it's you know i'm not hitting it the same way he is and i was like well who cares though um that is an area that i think we could all be a little bit kinder to ourselves on if you're co covering a song right and you know when you belt something it sounds headier versus chestier like it can be fun to try to make those changes for your own growth and development but you are by no means singing it wrong right you are just using your voice as the voice that you have right and our voices are all kind of going to be capable of slightly different things now why am i going off on this when we're talking about a harsh vocal thing well because he has a very fry influenced vocal like a very fry influenced vocal and you notice i'm saying fry influenced um rather than just straight up fry and that's because i got a lot of i got a lot of thoughts on fry screams lately every once in a while i scan the internet just to see what the current lingo is um because i, I feel like it changes a lot and like I, i'll be honest i i was like looking through a bunch of like forums and places and i feel like the term fry scream can be really different from person to person to person. It's, it's kind of, it's kind of mind blowing. I've even thought about making a whole video on it. Just like the, not like what is a fry scream, but the experience of like naming conventions in metal vocals. I think they're almost sometimes like they're less like academic terms and more like folk terms, like, you know, terms that are shared and change and morphed by people sitting around a fire. Right. Um, like that sort of thing, except the fire is Reddit, um, which that's not me putting down um, anything on Reddit, by the way. I, I actually have no like emotional tie to terms. I'm fine with them changing. As long as we're all talking about the same thing, I don't really care what we call them, honestly. Um, but my point with saying this is that the vocals that he have are very built towards lifting a mid into a high. Right. So, you know, earlier, I can't remember if it was this video or another one. I think it was this video. I was talking about how a lot of mids are based, are, are close to people's chest voice. Well, he's, you know, able to lift really, really quickly into that, that headspace. Now me, the type of mids that I do, they're very different. I would have to shift, right? So if I was doing a mid, you heard me shift techniques there, right? So which one of us, because we're shifting entirely different ways, which one of us is properly shifting to a high both of us we're both doing it right we're doing it right with the screams that we know how to do and that we have built our voice around so if you are trying to expand your toolbox and you want to just be able to do different things for fun that's awesome and you should do it but if you hear stuff like this song where he beautifully shifts a mid into a high and his technique doesn't change a whole lot it sounds like the same technique all the way through but you do it more like me don't beat your head against the wall thinking that you're doing something wrong. You're not. You're an amazing vocalist. Your voice is yours. And leaning into the unique parts of your voice is going to do a lot more for your voice uh, than, you know, carbon copying someone else. But anyways, that's my soapbox. Buy soap. Let's keep going.
Oh, man. That was sick. Gah. The last Nia Blevascaris uh, reaction video I did, I don't even know if it's up anymore. It did not get a whole lot of views, but I hope this one does because I really want more people. How many views does this have? Let's see. Um, this has 54,000. Okay, that's pretty good. Um, I think this should have like a million. I think this should have like a million views. Um, heavy metal, heavy metal blind auditions, the voice. Oh, God. Yeah, I'm going to watch it later. I know. Um, I'm going to like it. But um, I think that this should have, let's get rid of this, um, a ton, a ton more views. Um, but I really think more people should know about this band. How many, how many, um, actually, let me, let me turn this back on. Actually, no, it doesn't matter. How many listeners do they have on Spotify? Me, Oblivious, How many monthly listeners? 128,000. Look at that. Yeah, I was listening to Metallica earlier. Everyone leave me alone. All right. How about that? Um, but um 128,000. Like, this should be a much higher number. This should be a much higher number. Um, if anybody is new to this band and they're kind of looking uh looking into how to how to get into them, a lot of people I know, including myself, um, found uh found them um here portal of i i think that's i or one i don't know this is a great album and the most the most i think the most moving song here is a, a petrick or weave black weaves black noise but like there's not a bad song on this album um and they've got a lot of cool stuff um anyways so i'm i'm just surprised i thought this would be three four five hundred thousand um yeah they deserve a lot more because these guys are killing it anyways um Wonderful interplay between both vocalists. Uh, not a not a cool tech not a technical mishap in sight, um, and I think it's beautiful. I thought that song was amazing, and I love it. And uh, I'm gonna get back into these dudes because I gotta tell you, I've been a little burnt out on music in general. Least recently, I think it's just due to the nature of my job. Like, I do reaction videos, I do lessons. I'm in a band, and we're writing a new album, and I've had a hard time keeping up with that because so busy. And uh, I think like m music has very much felt like a job um for the past year and uh listening to that was was really fun so i think i'm gonna i think i'm gonna try to get back into listening to music for pleasure uh with new blivascaris because i don't know i felt like i felt like i felt the old love come back i don't know anyways um if you liked the video please like share and subscribe it means a lot i love seeing the channel grow um if you want to hang out with a bunch of other music enthusiasts of all varieties check out our patreon uh that is how you access our discord server our Discord server is growing. It's a lot of fun. Um, we recently have had an influx of students hanging out in there as well. Um, it's a great time. We talk about everything. We talk about vocals. We talk about video games. We talk about... We have a bunch of inside jokes that are just stupid and silly. Um, and it's a great time. And then it, finally, if you want to learn a little bit more about your voice, if you want to learn to do harsh vocal noises, if you want to get that journey going, um, I do give vocal lessons full time. Um, you can check us out at cardvoxacademy.com. You can see the link in the description. Uh, but yeah, thank you all for hanging out for this video. Um, I had a great time doing this. And uh, yeah, many thanks. Much love. I'm out.